Welcome back to the podcast. My name is Joseph Clough, and this is episode 875. So I hope you're enjoying my work to date. Now, this whole episode is all about really what hypnosis is and the best best way of applying hypnosis into your life to get the best results. You see, I have lots of questions about hypnosis, so I thought I'd like to kind of compile a bit of the history, the application, what's going to be the best type of things for you to use so when you use the app, you'll be able to get results quicker and faster than ever before. And you'll also know why it actually works. Not to say that you need to, because I don't know how electricity works, but I still flick the switch every day, expecting it to work and come on. But it's also nice to be able to have a bit of an understanding and it may even just improve a bit of self-certainty with that. So in this episode, that is what we're talking about. What is hypnosis? How can we use it? And more importantly, how can you utilize it to be able to get the best results in the most comfortable, wonderful way? So let's just get into why is this important? Well, the more you know about something, the more you can utilize it, you can understand it, and you can also get feedback from it to be able to improve yourself. And the other reason why hypnosis is really important to learn in general is because if you could consciously let go of your issue, if it was in your control and you could click your fingers and let it go, you absolutely would, right? If you're in control of it, you just let it go. But if you cannot, it must mean something else is running. That fear, that doubt, that anxiety, the the habits, the, uh, the depression, the bad money associations, all of those things. Any issue, in other words, that you cannot consciously have control over is running the issue and that's the unconscious mind and by the way you can say subconscious you can go unconscious people differentiate it sometimes but i just like to go with unconscious in other words not conscious i want to be able to use hypnosis to work with the unconscious mind now you as a conscious person you are very vital in the process of hypnosis because you've got to be ready and willing to let go of an issue. Like if you don't want to let it go, there's not really much emphasis or importance for the unconscious mind to let it go. You see, your unconscious mind is going to be following your directions. It's going to be following your needs and your desires. So if you're not ready and you're just like listening to it as if I hope that it works, but I'm not really that interested. You're going to face a little bit of resistance from the unconscious mind too. But if you are really ready to let go of the goal, let go of the the problem and get your goal. And if you need help with that, just list out all the pain of what the issue is holding you back from. And then all the greatness of what you'll get is going to leverage, leverage the importance of it. That's why I always like to say, come up with a hundred reasons to change and a hundred things maybe of what it will give you. And therefore, it's going to be important to you. But yes, the unconscious mind is going to be the thing that we primarily use with hypnosis. And the unconscious mind does many things. It runs the habits and the behaviors, the healing of the body, the fight and flight response, the, the organization of memories. It does our belief systems. And that is why it's very hard to let go of the belief that you may hold. Even if you know you got all the evidence, like on paper, you might have all the degrees and all the experience, but you may believe you're still an imposter because the unconscious mind is running that belief, okay? So it does beliefs, it does our values. In other words, our values are what are important to us. It's why we do what we do. So if you have uh, the scarcity and worry around money, 
it kind of gets pushed down the pecking order of what's important. Even if you consciously want it, your unconscious mind is still running it. So your unconscious mind does many, many things. For example, when you're, if you can drive and you've been doing it for a long time, you probably don't really think about it too much. Or at least as you get into that habitual journey, you kind of go, well, I don't even remember red lights. I don't remember the green lights. But you somehow manage to listen to a podcast, listen to some music, and get to where you want to be whilst unconsciously doing all these processes. Just like walking, sometimes just like talking, all of those things your unconscious mind is running. So now we're uncovering that I don't want to like put a real percentage, but you could say as an analogy, we've got like the tip of the iceberg being the conscious mind and then everything below the surface of this iceberg is all unconscious. We've got this iceberg of information below the surface, right? Below the surface. And that is your unconscious. So we try to battle it out consciously, yet we don't need to. We don't need to do much conscious work if we just work with the unconscious mind. Far more so, in other words. Don't battle it on and by yourself. We want to get the unconscious mind to be utilized by hypnosis. But where did hypnosis come from? Well, there's kind of historic kind of thoughts about hypnosis. And although it wasn't termed or coined hypnosis, but it goes all the way back to like um, ancient Greece and even far back to the times of ancient Egypt and so on, where they had these special places, in other words, areas where they would go into like these sleep tombs or they would go into these, and they'd call it different things depending where it was, but these places where you'd go into a trance and sometimes someone would be leading that. So hypnosis has actually been around for a crazy long time. And some of the elements have changed over the years. In fact, some of the words have changed because there was a person called Anton Mesmer. And that is where we could think, well, what does Mesmer sound like? Was well, mesmerized, mesmerism, right? So that's why we hear was that person was mesmerized. The hypnotist mesmerized someone or you were mesmerized by their voice or their face. It's very hypnotic, right? So Anton Mesmer used to use, I believe, used to have magnets. So using magnets to be able to help ailments. And even to this day, that is what happens. But supposedly he forgets the magnets one day and does it anyway, the same process. And he got the results. So in the end, it was like, well, it can't just be about the magnets. It's about me. Like it's about Anton Mesmer. Hence where it's when it became mesmerism. Um, and then as we go further out in time, we've got pioneers of hypnosis who really took it into the medical world, who are medical practitioners like Dave Elman, or you've got people like Dr. Milton Erickson. You've got these people who are using hypnosis in a way from the stage hypnosis, which is all true, by the way. Stage hypnosis is all true. I actually have done a stage hypnosis course, but you got to remember two kinds of people who go to a stage show. That is those who want to be hypnotized and the other half being wanting to watch those who be hypnotized. So there's that willingness. So hypnosis in itself isn't power over you. It's this do with process. It's a cooperative flow of energy, usually between the hypnotist and the hypnotee or the audio hypnosis sessions like I do and you, right? This is a cooperative flow. And you got to remember one of the, one of the things I said about the unconscious mind, it runs your values. I said beliefs and your values. Well, values are the things which kind of keep you safe. They're also your morals. So you'll only take on the types of suggestions that fit your values and morals. So if I said you're going to rob a bank 
in the first session, you're not gonna do that because it goes against your values. Now, over time, you've got people like cults who do hypnosis, but that's a long period of time of hypnotic programming. And even to the point when the person is so-called like broken and they're trying to seek out help, it takes a long time of programming. So hypnosis is a safe thing. Even some people get issues when it comes to, say, religion and hypnosis. That was a big thing for a long time. But even the Pope has said that hypnosis is actually a very beneficial tool in different ways, from things like anesthesia. So there are some people in the world who are allergic, allergic from going into surgery, being anesthetized, what's the word, anesthesia? I can't even say the word, but you know, you go ahead and you have the, um, the anesthesia, I'll just say, um, and you can correct me in, 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 in your own mind there if I am wrong, but ultimately some people are allergic to that. So what do you do? Well, many people use hypnosis to be able to have that pain management and the body responding to it. So there are many great uses to this day. And in fact, before we had some medical um, science behind that, we could inject ourselves to be able to go to sleep. We actually used hypnosis in many cases for pain management and surgeries. So this is some vehicle of transformation that we've been using for thousands and thousands of years in different methodologies and different words. It is not quite as weird and wonderful, although you get weird and wonderful results, as you may expect. It is a process. So let's talk about the process a little bit. Well, hypnosis is really about a a, a focused attention that when you put your attention to a problem and you use then hypnosis to guide you into, a, I would say, a learning state, that's what it is, it's a learning state, that once you do, and if you do it well, because not everyone does it very well as a hypnotist, they just do, in other words, positive suggestions, which are fine, but by themselves, it doesn't always work. You want to be able to combine positive suggestions with unconscious learnings. You see, if I can convince your unconscious mind that what it's doing isn't protecting you, and then give it a more wonderful way, like knowing you're good enough and worthy to go for your goals and dreams, your unconscious mind will have to take it on because it's one of the reasons we go back to what it does, it tries to protect us. The healing, the habits, the fight and flight response. So if you can utilize this learning state, this focused intention and attention, you can then be begin to assume these learnings and suggestions, new beliefs, resources, actions, and reactions that gets the unconscious mind to assume them to be true, as if it's the new way of being. Very much like upgrading your computer. Like, if you've got, say, some antivirus software, well, sometimes it's going to update itself, right? Like you might get a notification, it's time to update your security of your computer. It's got like a new sequence, it's got new patterns and things like that to implement. And once you do that, you're safer. Well, think of hypnosis doing the exact same kind of thing. We're upgrading the system. We're getting the unconscious mind to be safer and better and more profound. And in a way, what it does, is, and there's why you don't have to consciously like pay attention to everything, is but it kind of bypasses the conscious critical faculty, the barrier to be able to assume this new way of being. So yes, you've got to be there, but that is also why you probably notice that you drift and dream at times. Like you're there, but also not there. You're listening, but you're kind of not listening. You're thinking about what you've got to do the next day or the next week and all those kind of things. But then your unconscious mind, sorry, your conscious mind tunes back into the session.
So there's going to be these elements of how hypnosis feels for you. And one of the analogies which I really think about is learning to ride a bike. Like how many times did it take you to get really good at it? And you can say the driving and walking. Well, it takes a number of times. So think of hypnosis is learning how to be hypnotized. The more you practice, the deeper you can go or the deeper the results that you'll get. So remember, if you don't feel anything the first time round, or if it's not so significantly different from your normal waking state, be gentle on the process. Allow it to be a practice that you get to just do it in a very consistent way, which will then get the results. So let's talk about that. If you are listening to my hypnosis sessions on my app, at freehypnosis.app if you haven't got it already, where we've got hundreds of titles in there. We've got lots of different subjects, like hundreds, uh, in day and night form. You want to be able to ideally listen to a hypnosis session once per day, minimum for 30 days. And by days, it also could be nights, right? So you can listen to a sleep hypnosis session for 30 days, and that's gonna take some time. Don't always expect it to be a day or two for it to magically appear, although that can happen. That really can. We just said it on the last couple of episodes that people have been saying that they've quit smoking after one night or two nights, like they've just let go of a 40 year addiction in just a couple of sessions with zero cravings. So expect miracles, but also be at peace to have that consistency. I even say to the people who tell me that, it's like, that's amazing, but keep on listening because we are undoing old trances. Like you've been hypnotized to have an issue by the people that have said things to you or the events that you went through. That is a form of hypnosis. Like the traumas that we went through hypnotize us to believe that we're not good enough or we're not worthy or deserving. So it takes time to set up these new neural networks. The um, the parts of our brain that need to be firing off in a new way. You don't go to a gym once and expect to have muscles. It takes time and consistency. So make sure you are listening to at least once per day or one per night. Now you can listen to a day one and then one in the evening to go to sleep to. That's probably really, really good as well. But ultimately, whatever you decide upon, make sure you do it with consistency once per day for 30 days or 30 nights. Now, the other question I get about hypnosis is, I've got all these issues, which one do I focus upon? Well, number one, I always say, discover or work out what the root causes. Sometimes all of those issues may be linked to one thing. Like we want to be able to pull the root out of a weed rather just working at each one of the, the branches of that, um, that weed. So ideally work on the one thing that is going to let go of the everything. That's my philosophy. Not every hypnotist has that, but I really like take the doctor frame. I want to get the symptoms to lead me to the cause. If I let go of the cause, I'm going to let go of all the symptoms. That is what I believe is the protocol for making hypnosis really profound. But let's just say you've got these other issues as well. You might go, well, I'm going to listen to a confidence one. And then the next evening, I'm going to listen to an anxiety one because they're complementary to one another. So feel free to sometimes mix it up. You may just want to make sure they're very complementary. They're very much the same in a way. If, for example, you've got things which are totally different, like totally different issues, let's think of an example. One could be, say, confidence, but the other one could be, let's say, exercise. And let's just say the exercise has nothing to do with confidence. It's just more about the discipline and the motivation and things like that. Well, if that was the case, 
Ideally, I would ask you to focus on the big one first, get that done with, and then work on the latter. So if you can hierarchy these issues, I would focus on the most meaningful one. The ones you let go will just fuel you to let go of the other one. That is the best way. Now, the other thing that I recommend with the app is to listen to a morning meditation. When you do, you're starting your day right. You're creating your day in a way that you want on your terms. You are setting the outcomes. So don't just get into your day and look at your social media and your emails. Plant yourself in a place to create your day the way that you would like it. So listen to a morning meditation. You can listen to different subjects of those, but ideally 30 days, uh, 30 mornings in this case, listen to like a five, 10 minute morning meditation and then end with a sleep one. If that's what you'd like to do, because we've got four hour um, sleep hypnosis sessions within the app as well. You also got the day and the night ones, which are like 45 minutes as a sleep one. And of course we do the bonus ones every single week. If you're a subscriber to, or in fact, if you're a subscriber for all of those things, but my recommendation is morning session of a meditation and then like a sleep one or maybe a day hypnosis session and a sleep one. And that just means you create your day the way that you want. It's like eating a nutrition meal, nutritious meal. You're more likely to eat better throughout the day. It just sets up the mind. Treat your mind like your body sometimes. You wanna be able to nurture and nourish it so you know exactly what you want. After all, you're the conscious goal setter, your unconscious mind's a goal getter. So if you set that pathway in the morning, you're telling your unconscious mind, this is how I'm going to be throughout my day. And then you listen to a sleep one and you do the work beneath the, the, the surface. And there's been studies and there's why I do the four hour ones your unconscious mind, although it diminishes as time goes on, it is also able to assume those learnings and that transformation. Just like if someone kind of, you were sleeping at night and someone said, hey, are you awake? You will probably be aware of that, depending on how deep you are asleep. But most of the time you'd be like, oh, oh yeah, what's up? So your unconscious mind's always listening. It is always eavesdropping. So therefore, if we can get the unconscious mind to make that change and provide a safer way of being, it will do so. So to recap everything, remember, hypnosis is not just like stage hypnosis. It's been around for thousands of years in different cultures. It is a power of suggestion. It's about getting the rapport of yourself. In fact, Milton Erickson, actually, uh, who actually mentioned, who kind of put it, brought hypnosis into the medical side, said patients are patients because they've been too, something like too, hypnot too hypnotized by external social programming. So hypnosis is about kind of meeting with the unconscious mind to get the results. So think about that. Your unconscious mind is just out of rapport with you consciously. So we go into this trance to create rapport again, which is synergy, congruency. It is alignment. It is wholeness. It is fulfillment. It is peace. And therefore you get your goals and dreams emotionally, psychologically, or externally and physical as well, because you're very congruent in being the person you want to be. So remember, it doesn't go against religion. It doesn't it's very much in alignment, I believe. I mean, if you are religious, it allows the unconscious and conscious to be connected to something greater than yourself. In my belief system, that is what I think is a super way of doing these things. And on top of that, of course, psychotherapists use it all the time. But there's, I've taught dentists how to use hypnosis for numbing parts of the, the mouth for those who need surgery or dentists for working with children when they're anxious or adults when they're anxious, how to use hypnotic language patterns. So there are so many ways of using hypnosis, but how you use it should be really working on the main issue, the core if possible. 
and or there's complementary ones you might do two one night one the next night or just alternate each night or each morning but make sure you use a morning meditation make sure you lose a sleep session and really build things up 30 days and you might actually want to keep doing it as well because the more you listen the more you learn but it causes you to be able to grow and become congruent so it's not weird it's weird and wonderful in a way because it is a little bit different from our conscious state but remember you will drift your dream your unconscious mind will learn what it needs to learn take on only the learnings which fits your values which makes it safe and therefore you can work on a variety of issues and if you have any doubts reach out to your medical provider i always say that like make sure um if it's like big issues definitely reach out to your medical provider don't use hypnosis in the beginning like get the knowledge you need and the help you need i believe hypnosis is really good for many many people i really do and the reason why is because i've done it for I don't know 22 years now of doing hypnosis and it let go of my anxiety and my blushing and that's why I do what I do today all these episodes I'm so passionate about it and I've seen the results throughout those 22 years and as long as you're ready you're willing in terms of you're ready to change you're willing to listen and do the work and get yourself in the right um, position to listen to the track then your unconscious mind is as well as i said you are the conscious goal setter your unconscious mind's a goal getter you just need to set the intention and listen and your unconscious mind will do the rest so once again if you haven't got the app go to freehypnosis.app and you'll get access if you're a subscriber you get access to a ton of things the morning meditations a four-hour sleep sessions every track in day and night form audio programs in there you can repeat you can create playlists you can favor you can download you can do so many things within the app and that just means you're supporting yourself and getting the results that you want so be a subscriber if you can if not just utilize all the free work and like i said being a subscriber you get the bonus weekly sleep sessions i love the sleep ones the reason being is you get to just fall asleep and transform while you sleep and wake up transformed um but yeah if you don't want to be a subscriber then just listen to all the free work it is there for you so I hope you got value from this episode, a bit of the history, a bit of the what, the how, the what if, a bit of the principles and how to actually use it as a process. And therefore you'll be able to make the changes that you desire. So with that, my friends, I look forward to speaking to you on a future episode. Many thanks and goodbye.